Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived two brothers, one rich and the other poor. Julius, who was quite wealthy, gave nothing to his poor brother Felix. Felix grew corn, but often did so badly that he would have no food to put on the table for his wife and children. One day, when Felix was travelling through the forest, he looked up and saw a great mountain in front of him. But this was no ordinary mountain, for it was bare. There was not a tree on it. He stared at it for some time, amazed. Suddenly, twelve enormous men flew out of the bushes. They were coming toward him. Believing that they were going to rob him, Felix climbed up a tree and waited to see what would happen. The men ran straight past him. They kept going until they reached the base of the mountain. Simeli Mountain! Simeli Mountain! Open! The mountain split down the middle and opened. Felix could not believe his eyes. He watched flabbergasted as the men went inside. What was more, he had seen these twelve men before. They were the band of thieves who had robbed his townspeople just two years before. As soon as the last man was in, the mountain shut behind them. Not long after, the mountain opened again and the men came out carrying large, heavy sacks on their shoulders. And when they were out, they turned and said again, Simeli Mountain! Simeli Mountain! Close! And the mountain closed as the twelve men disappeared into the trees. When Felix was sure he was once again alone, he climbed down from the tree. He was quite curious to know what was hidden inside the mountain. So he went up to it and said, Simeli Mountain! Simeli Mountain! Open! And the mountain opened. Felix stepped inside and saw that the mountain was really a cavern. It was filled with silver and gold. Even further in lay great piles of sparkling jewels and pearls and diamonds and rubies alike. Felix did not know what to do. He was unsure if he could take any of these trinkets. But at last he made his decision. He filled his pockets with gold, but did not touch the pearls or precious stones. When Felix was outside and clear of the mountain, he said again, Simeli Mountain! Simeli Mountain! Close! And the mountain closed. Now Felix would no longer worry, for with the gold he could buy bread and food and wine for his family. From then on he lived a joyful and good life, He helped the poor and was kind and generous to everyone he met. But soon the gold ran out. He went to his brother to borrow a wheelbarrow. Why? asked Julius. I need to take my corn to town. (laughs) Take it if you must, but bring it back before nightfall. Of course, brother, replied Felix. And so back to the mountain he went. This time Felix filled the wheelbarrow full of gold almost double what he took the first time. But just as he had done before, he did not touch the pearls or the jewels. Felix was once more at ease. It was longer this time before the gold had run out. And when it did, he went back to his brother for the wheelbarrow. However rich Julius was, he had been terribly envious of his brother's possessions, for now they far outweighed his own. He also resented the life that Felix now had, for everyone loved him. Julius wanted to know from where these riches came and why his brother continued to borrow the wheelbarrow. When Felix arrived and asked for it a third time, Julius was quite amicable and let him have it without a word. 
but this time he had a plan. He followed his brother and watched as Felix called to the mountain to open, went inside and came out with a wheelbarrow full of gold. He could not believe it. Julius wanted the treasure for himself and he would have it. And so the next day, after his brother had returned the wheelbarrow, Julius took it with him to the mountain. When he arrived, he called, Simeli Mountain! Simeli Mountain! Open! The mountain opened and he went inside. And there before him, gleaming, were all the treasures. He looked and looked, but did not know what to take first. He wanted all all of it. At last, he loaded the wheelbarrow with as many precious stones as he could carry, and he became so overcome with greed that when he was ready to leave, Julius found that he'd forgotten the name of the mountain. He cried, Semi Mountain, Semi Mountain, open! That was not the right name, and the mountain remained closed. He grew anxious, for he was trapped. And the more nervous he became, the more his thoughts began to confuse themselves. His treasures were no longer any use to him. He tried every name he could think of, but nothing worked. By evening, Julius had nearly given up. Then suddenly, the mountain opened. At first, Julius was elated, but then he saw them. It was the twelve robbers. Julius ran and hid. The men entered, and this time they brought more treasure with them. <laughs> the guards haven't even noticed anything's missing yet, said one. The king of the mountain will never find out. At least not that it was us. <laughs> Julius could not believe his ears. This treasure belonged to the king. When they had finished unloading their plunder, they left. Julius waited a long while to be sure they were gone, and just as he was about to call to the mountain to open it, it did. He ran and hid, thinking the robbers had come back. But it was not the thieves. It was his own brother, Felix. Brother, Julius cried, and they embraced. When you did not return home, your wife came and told me, and I went with her to your house, and when I saw the wheelbarrow gone, I knew. You followed me here. I thank heavens you came. A brother's love never fails. A truth, brother. But we must leave and go to the king of the mountains, for this is his treasure and the robbers have taken it. They came this very night and brought more of it. The king? Well, I shall be thrown in the dungeon, said Felix. No, brother, if you are the one who tells him, you and I both shall be spared. I'm sure of it, for it is the right thing to do. Then we shall return it to its rightful owner and I shall atone for my sins. And so shall I. After they had come out of the mountain, Felix turned to the mountain and said, Simeli Mountain, Simeli Mountain, hide yourself. And to his surprise, it worked. The mountain closed, and the grass grew tall, the trees grew wider, and a river formed where the opening had been. The brothers travelled for days and finally reached the palace of the king. And when they told the king that they had found his treasure, he was grateful. I shall make you each a knight for your valiance, he told them. Felix replied, Your Highness, I cannot accept it, for when I found the gold I did not know to whom it belonged. I took a bit to provide for my family and, and then I took a bit more. I welcome your honesty. The debt is forgiven. In fact, I will tell you, when you take my men to the mountain, I bestow upon you 15 gold bars each, so that you and your family may live in prosperity. And so the king made them knights of the crown, and the brothers took the king's men to the mountain. Simeli Mountain! Simeli Mountain! Show yourself! The trees grew smaller, the river dried up, and the grass became shorter. The mountain opened. The men gave Felix and Julius 15 gold bars each and sent them on their way, for they were to wait for the 12 thieves. 
When the brothers returned home, they shared their wealth with the townspeople, and Felix and Julius lived in peace and harmony with their family for the rest of their days. The end. And now it's time to take a deep breath, close our eyes, so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>